together growing in faith, changing communities. Together growing in faith, changing communities. My dear brothers and sisters, today I would like us to reflect on the book of Romans, the letter that of St. Paul that he has written to the Romans in chapter 8 from verse 31 to verse 34. Brethren, if God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his only son, but gave him up for us all, that we will no longer give us all things that we also need from him. What speaks to me regarding what Paul talks about are the first lines, if God is for us. If God is on our side. But I would like to put it not as a condition, but rather as a statement that God is on your side. That God is for you. That God believes in your capabilities. That God believes in you as a person, that God loves you as a human being. He knows your struggles. He knows your fears. He knows what you've been going through. He knows the things that he had promised you and you have not yet received. He knows how you view yourself. He accepts and he loves your success with your failures, your achievements with your mistakes, the good and the bad. He's in love with you. That for me is something which is actually beautiful. To realize that in God, I am loved. In God, I met him. And so when St. Paul says, if God is for us, who can be against us? The other translation will say, if God is on my side, I do not care how much of an opposition there is outside. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. And I think if we were to go back and to accept and to realize the truth of that statement. That I do not need to worry so much about the battles outside. I do not need to worry so much about the opposition outside. I do not need to worry so much about the people who do not like me. I do not want me to worry about the generational curses in my own family. I do not need to worry so much about the bad things that people are doing or saying against my name. Because the one in me is greater than anything in the world. And so I'm not prepared to waste time entertaining what is outside. I should be entertaining what is within. And that which is within is God. How many of us can believe that? And how many of us can sit with that truth? That I only want to focus 
on God and what he's doing in my life. I want to focus on what God is blessing me with in my life. And once I can accept that, once I can cherish that, once I can celebrate that, all other things will fall into place. And so St. Paul says, if God is for us, who can be against us? I don't need to worry about tomorrow. I don't need to worry about the future of my kids. Because I know that God will take care of it. We live in a time when we are so afraid, where we are so anxious, where we worry about the future but also we are so quick to forget look around you my God you are alive wow was it because you were wearing a mask all the time was it because you were steaming all the time was it because you were taking the vitamins all the time? Is it because the God you pray to is far more greater than the other gods? No. There are people who lived with us, who worshipped with us, who are no longer with us today. They did all those things and more. They went to hospitals, but they died. They stayed at home, and they died. It was only by grace. What am I saying today? The mere fact that you're still alive, you owe God your life. I owe God. The only thing we can do is to live this life in gratitude, indebted to God. To make each day count. There is a principle that I have inculcated into my life and I'm working on it. I'm making a conscious decision every day. I am not going to get angry. I am not going to waste my day on things that are not important. Make each day count. So that at the end, of your day you and I can go before God and say it was a beautiful day it was a great day there were challenges but it was a great day St. Paul continues in his writing and he says if God did not spare his only son would he not give us all that we need. A couple of days ago, I posted on my status after my meditation in the morning. There was something that sat with me. Thank you, Lord, for all the times you said no to my request. And we need to thank God for those moments. When I went to him, I said, Lord, I need this. Lord, I'm asking for this. And he said, no. He said, no. Because he gave me more than what I had asked for. He gave me what I needed the most, even though I didn't know I needed it 
at the time. My dear brothers and sisters, what St. Paul talks about today resonates within my spirit. If only I can focus on God, the rest will fall into its place. I always tell this story. It is a, 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 a father who's busy working on something. It's like Joseph is working on something and one of his children come and say, hey, Joseph, among your children, which one is the naughtiest? Okay, don't say you're going to get into trouble when you get home. So the naughtiest comes and say, Daddy, 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 hey, I want this. And then Joseph says, hey, okay, uh, he sees the, there is a map of Africa and he cuts it into pieces. And he says, go and sort this out and tell me which country where it is. If it's in the south, put it in the south. In central, put central. North, put central. North, east, put east. West, put west. And the child takes this and he goes there. And Joseph says, well, I know it will take him or her a couple of days to sort that out while I'm working on this. But after a minute or two, the child brings in and says, look at all the map of Africa. And boom, everything is in place. And he gets confused. And he says, but how did you know? You're so young. Did Celia help you with this? And no, 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 no. And how did you know? And the little one says, but I also look at the face of Jesus. And when I put the face of Jesus, everything went, went into place. Because in the piece of paper, on the other side, there was a face of Jesus. And on the other side, there were other countries. And the moral of the story is quite simple. If you focus on Jesus, everything else in your life will fall into place. May the Virgin Mother of God continue to be with us to protect and bless and to guide us. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.